Hi, welcome to the Shelly Studio. Today I am working on my project for the YouTube hop that already happened. So um, if you haven't seen that one yet, I will link it down below where I talk about this project um, and why. <laughs> but I had those wood planks from December and I'm finally getting around to doing some collage on them. I thought it would be fun to collage some of my gel prints and make them into hanging art pieces. And I dusted off the plank in case there was any dust or wood. And then I'm getting it, giving it a coat of gesso. Um, I actually kind of wanted to see if it would warp. It curved a little bit. I figured if it curved a lot, I would just gesso the backside as well. Um, but at the time when I did this, it was... It laid pretty flat, and I don't make you watch me um, gesso the whole thing. And now I'm taking a brown. Um, I decided the prints that I made um, lent, tend towards the brown, and none of them are on anything too transparent, so it should be okay. And I gave that a couple of coats just to make sure there wasn't any white left showing. And then I picked out a range of gel prints that I thought would go together. I wanted a little bit of bling, so this one has a bit of a bronzy color on it. Um, some bronze and brown. And then this one, I think they all kind of coordinate. Um, this one is Aqueous Effervescence Broken was the stencil I used to create this particular print trying to decide which orientation I want it to go. Um, so that determines where I tear. <laughs> um, but I think I decided the chains would go up and down. I think that's how they go. Uh, I'm looking at it across the room. Yeah, I think that's how that goes. <laughs> um... So, yeah, this is what I'm working on. And I'm just using my little ruler. It's, it's really for fabric, but um, works great to get straight right angles. <laughs> and it's got a little bit sharpish edge, so it tears pretty good. This pr particular print... Um, I did say that the flip through was um, already done and I also have posted the um, gel printing video of where I created these except for the bronzy one. Um, these were all created in one one session and that was uploaded not too long ago. I'll put a link to that if you're interested to see how these pages um, came about. And now I'm just deciding what order I want things in. And we're going to add this brown to it as well. Kind of looks giraffe-like. Um, this particular pattern, or at least the bigger patterns, I've stamped also with some cardboard. But um, the main pattern um, is Turtle Stained Glass, I think, by Fran on the Edge. They're both PM Artist Studio stencils. The bronze, I think that was an ice stencil stencil. Um, I think it's a badass stencil. It's hard to see it. I'm just, um, I just like the interesting texture that it creates. Can't really tell the pattern too much. All right, so just laying them out, trying to figure out where they're gonna go. That orange piece that's rough on the edges, that is um, from my brayer. I peeled off my brayer and I decided I was going to include it. And this black piece is some, I think it was Thai paper. I think that's what they called it. I got it at a store called Mulberry Paper and More. And, um, yeah, it's interesting. And I added... Um, India ink to it. 
it's kind of hard to see the pattern now that it's black and then once I glue it down it I think the pattern disappears but it's got texture <laughs> but that was just one little section of a big sheet of white so I'll probably be using that again in some other collage maybe paint it with something other than black next time it's got a little bit of white still on there but I'm just going to use the the rough edge side and put it down and now I'm trying to decide how much I didn't want all four pieces to be even because it's four pieces and then I'm adding these extra little bits so that'll make six that's an even number oh I think I add in a little strip of blue I put in later so that makes seven so that's an odd number <laughs> But there are four main groupings, so that's kind of even, but it's okay. It's, this is just fun, right? Fun art, not fine art. <laughs> so I figured out my layout, and since I have these um, little kind of solid pieces going between each print, that's why I decided to put um, a little strip between the light colored and the bronze colored. And I think I just pull out a piece of deli paper that has some blue on it, dark blue, and stick it in. There we go. <laughs> so now that I've got it all laid out, I probably didn't even need to paint that brown because um, well, you do see the edges, but I also go over the edges with a little bit of a metallic sort of color. Um, but yeah, well, I guess it was just in case the edges got uh, were showing, and they do a little bit. And yeah, this is my smooshing technique. <laughs> So, um, I put matte medium on the surface and then matte medium on the paper and then push it down with matte medium. That's a lot of matte medium. But surprisingly, if I make sure there's no air bubbles and get any thickness out from underneath, um, the papers dry pretty flat. So that's good except for where that textured paper is. There's no making that flat. So here, I was a little unsure since this is just a skin, an acrylic skin, that my liquid matte medium would work, but um, it seems to be it held up okay. I wasn't sure how much orange space I wanted to leave, but in the end, I give it quite a big space. More squishing technique. <laughs> and you could tell that was deli paper. Just clean up paper, just random bits of painty paper that's hanging about. I think when you um, put matte medium on bo both surfaces that reduces the possibility of air bubbles. At least that's what I've been told. Um, I don't always do it that way but that's how I did it this time. Okay so I combined all those colors together. Did anybody catch what those colors were? <laughs> and made this concoction. I was going for sort of a reddish brown color. And um, the idea was to print it onto the surface just to add um, something. If the It felt too pristine. But then I didn't like it on the light colored, so I wipe it back a little bit. And then I kind of like the painted and then wiped back a little bit part. So I do it again. 
all over it and then rub it back <laughs> and then just taking a baby wipe to it and wiping it off and then I decide that um, I kinda like the vignette look when you darken all the edges um, so I go around everywhere with that same concoction of color so I don't know what I'd call this technique <laughs> but I run the paint along the edges and then blend it out with my finger and then there's some areas where I felt like I, I needed to use the baby wipe and I'm just using that same baby wipe And I'm going to do it around each section. Just think it gives it more depth. It makes it look richer and yeah. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. I divide the orange from the orange pattern. Yeah, there I go. I don't think I do both both angles, just that one. Again, I just I just think it it improves it a hundred percent. You'll have to give me your opinion. What do you think? What would you have done? Or which one which way do you like it? Before or after I add the dark edges? Gonna do it on the last one as well. I think my finger was getting tired, that's why I'm doing the baby wipe the whole time. Sorry, I'm not talking much. <laughs> okay, so I've got that done. And I decide I'm going to stencil onto that bit of orange uh, acrylic skin. And I'm using Robin McClendon's script stencil. I think this one is Robin's. And just finding a section of her scripting that looks like a complete sentence and that will fit inside um, the width I've got and of course her scripts go up and down this is going sideways but it looks like writing even sideways Alright, so I wanted to put something on this big space and I wanted to do like a medallion. So I used my, I think it's a two inch punch. I decided that was too small. So I pull out this ribbon roll and um, cut that one out. I think I even decide that one isn't as big as I want it to be. I mean that one's good but I think I find something that's just a little bit bigger there it is and um, I do two pieces and glue them together I don't show you that just to make it a little thicker and stiffer and I recently saw and I know this is an old technique um, 
but I'd never heard of it, never seen it before. It's where you take Eileen's uh, tacky glue and you smoke it, and it's supposed to look like foam metal. So I thought I'd give it a try for this project. <laughs> Why not do it for the first time on video? <laughs> so I made myself a little handle with some masking tape so I could hold it and not burn myself. And I've put a layer of the glue, made sure all the edges were covered. And then a little candle. And I've got a fan going, so it's um, not going too well. But I do um, turn the fan off and just suffer with the... So that it'll go straight. And I have a different camera angle. What do you know? <laughs> I switched to my phone. I have my phone going. And... Um, the camera's got a lot better view than I do. I have to keep turning it over because I don't know, like I don't want to start a fire, right? <laughs> but you want to do it until it's ashy black, like it's black. But you don't want to snuff out the candle and you don't want to start something on fire. So I was like repeatedly moving and checking and moving and checking until it's all done. And then you, you pat it with a paper towel. And that gives it like a crinkled sort of um, molded metal, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I saw um, Barb Owens showed some that she'd done a long time ago. And then I had to Google the technique. So there it is. And I could have left it like that. But they did rub and buff on theirs. And so I have some old ink gold. And I put the ink gold on there. Um... I don't know, the silver might have been better, but I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I don't have any silver, so. I went with this, and because it's gold, and the background is bronze, I felt like it was too bright. And I'm not sure that it looks like metal. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting, but once you smush it down, you just let it dry. It's got to dry. So when you when you smoke it like that, the surface is dry, but it's it's still liquid underneath. And you smush it down, and you get that bubbly sort of cast metal look, I guess. Um, but yeah, so I had let it dry before I started adding the ink gold. So I thought it was too orange so now I've got a lighter one so I go around with that um, you I, I do so much of this you can't see the original anymore <laughs> in the finished piece and I decide that's too white so I'm putting it on there I'm like from here, looking at it through the camera, I'm like, that, that's not that bad. That's not that bad. Um, but looking at it in person, I didn't like it. So now, because my background is kind of bronze, I pull out Penny um, by the Dino Wakeley's paints. And that's just too orange. <clears throat> so, yeah, this gets a lot of layers. Now I'm pulling out Aztec Gold by Arteza because I'm like, something's got to be better <laughs> than that. <laughs> uh, now it's even more orange and really bright. It just doesn't fit. You know, it's just, it's just too shiny, too orange. Alright, so I wipe down as much as I can. Nothing's coming off of there. It's very bright. So I decide what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, a mask. This is Medallions by Judy P. It's a PM Artist Studio. And I'm going to mix a little bit of um, brown. Well, I think I, I do brown first. Yeah. So I try to center that up. And I put brown in there to make an interesting design and hopefully mute the brightness of it. I didn't want it so bright. I 
but it's also with this it's also lost its shine so I have that metallic sitting there um, that I think I put over the top of the brown um, Trying to find a place to put my fingers. <laughs> okay. Yeah. See. Alright. We're going to add some of this. Doing it all one handed. That's hard. That's too wide. Okay. There we go. This will help. I keep telling myself that. <laughs> I think I am happy with how it ends up in the end. So I make sure I get some of that metallic everywhere and I still think that orange is too orange so um, I let it dry and I'm looking at it see I'm like oh it's too orange so I just take a little bit of that same metallic and do a light a real light coat over everything And when the light hits it just right, you can't see anything at all um, after covering it. So I take a baby wipe to it and wipe it back. And it's already dried on there so much that it doesn't wipe back too much. But now it looks really old, right? <laughs> so it's like an old antique piece of metal. It was a medallion of some sort. There we go. So I put a few, um, I didn't have any double stick tape or anything, but I wanted something to hold it in place while the glue um, sets up. So I added the little photo squares and center this. I'm just doing it by eyeball and then hold it down. And clean it up and that is I think that's it I put the strings back in I do poke holes back into the top and put the strings back in it took it took a bit to make that hole big enough <laughs> you're really working it so I can get those back in and they just slide in they're, they're pretty convenient if I can get my hole big enough. And that's how I will hang them. So there it is. All completed. Ready to go. And yeah, I just have five more to go. <laughs> so here are a couple of shots of the different patterns. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, let me know. Leave me a thumbs up or a comment. Thank you all for watching. Have an awesome day.